from getting a script rewritten to failing to make his own movie, here are some crazy secrets you didn't know about Martin Starr. Starr has acted in three of the most well-received comedies of this century. What do I do? System architecture, networking and security. While you were busy minoring in gender studies and singing a cappella at Sarah Lawrence, I was gaining root access to NSA servers. And what else do you expect from the son of an actress? As Bill, he was perhaps the most endearing character on Freaks and Geeks, the celebrated 1999 TV show. But I guess it's kind of unfair to introduce Martin by referencing a character that he portrayed almost two decades ago. Back then, he was only 17. Still, people who have seen the show will find it difficult to shake their soft spot for Martin as Bill. Why didn't you just let one of those jocks pitch? What are you talking about? This is our game. We can do this. I don't want them to think they were right for putting me in, in deep right field for 11 years. Come on! The awkward, hilarious, and deadpan geek. Of course, Martin hasn't been slacking off since then. After it, he starred in Party Down, Silicon Valley, and most recently in Taylor Sheridan's Tulsa King. He's even made his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Roger Harrington in The Incredible Hulk and Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies. Martin has been an actor ever since he was young, but he's not the only actor in his family. His mother, Jean St. James, is an actress herself with more than 100 credits to her name. Not much different from his laid-back characters on screen, Martin is actually a practicing Buddhist in his day-to-day -day life. He also acted in the movies Save the Date and Six Month Rule. In fact, Save the Date's director had an affinity for him as that character and rewrote the script. Martin talked about how he had a completely random meeting with Michael Mohan, who wrote and directed Save the Date. He took a natural liking for his character as he was was rewriting the script. Martin confessed that, at first, he couldn't really tell if he was on the same page as the director. This was because of the way he was talking about the meeting he had set up for the next week. He didn't really see that actor in the movie and its tone. He even doubted if he was looking at the same script as him or whether they both had the same end goal. But that didn't stop the two from going ahead with it. Only a week later, Michael emailed Martin that he'd just held a meeting with Lizzie Kaplan and that she was interested. A few days later, he messaged that Mark Webber and Jeffrey Arend felt the same way, and everything just slowly seemed to be coming together. At least, that's how Martin saw it. He admitted that he thought that they were the kind of people who were really capable of bringing the story to life. It's closer than we are currently, which is I'm, I'm across the country, more towards the East Coast, uh, working on a movie called Spider-Man. Martin also talked to Lizzie a bit, and soon everything just fell into place and they had their cast. But of course, Save the Date isn't the only movie with an interesting story behind the scenes. Before starring in Infinity Baby, he wanted to perform in Seven Chinese Brothers. It all started when he saw a movie by director Bob Byington called Somebody Up There Likes Me. He really liked the film, and lucky for him, they had a few mutual friends. He held talks with Bob hoping to make something together. They had had attempted to work together on Seven Chinese Brothers, and Bob had a few incarnations of the cast involved. Unfortunately, in the end, they weren't able to make it work, and Bob did the project with Jason Schwartzman instead. But this wasn't the end for Martin's hopes of working with Bob. He got his chance just two years later with Infinity Baby. Don't take them yourself. Why would I do that? What? I mean, I, I've, I for one don't sleep good, and if I had the choice, one bowel movement a week would be ideal. Martin played a salesman of babies who never age. Yes, I know, talk about a weird premise. But then again, it's pretty much in the movie's title, isn't it? The movie wasn't long, with a runtime of just 80 minutes. Now, Martin might have gotten a role in Bob's movie, but it wasn't all smooth sailing from there. Believe it or not, Martin was scared about portraying his relationship with Kevin Corrigan in the film. It's not that he didn't want to act on screen with Kevin, he's actually known him for more than two decades. The two worked together 
on an episode of Freaks and Geeks, and they've been in touch ever since they met in 1999. Because of this, he was actually pretty excited to finally get to work with him on something where they got to play a little bit. But there was a ton of on-screen tension between them in the film. Martin's character Malcolm and Kevin's character Larry are friends and co-workers. There's a lot of random and hilarious bickering between the two. Larry's very cynical and has a habit of saying what he thinks even if it's inappropriate. As such, Malcolm and his relationship can get tense at times. They're a private as well as a professional duo, but Malcolm isn't quite sure he's gay, and Larry's true significant other seems to be alcohol. Martin said that he and Kevin talked about it a bit. What they really wanted was to sink their teeth deep into what their relationship actually was because it wasn't anything simple. Still, Martin confessed that he was scared about how he would go about bringing the relationship he had with Kevin to life. It was something he'd never explored before, and even if it was challenging, he had a lot of fun jumping into it. Now, Martin does make a lot of good decisions about which movies and TV shows to star in. You thought of mine performing fellatio was bad? What happens when your customers find out that every single thing they've ever said in front of their hearth has been recorded. And it turns out money doesn't really factor into his choices. He revealed that his manager actually makes fun of him because he tends to avoid taking roles for money. He even called himself allergic to money. According to him, his choices are made based on the people and project in itself, and not the financial gain that he'd get by acting in it. He even said that he had a reputation for being the opposite of a money grubber. Even though it can be considered bad business, Martin insists that he's happy and has got no complaints. His passions aren't limited to simply acting though. He wants to write his own movie or TV show as well. He revealed that he actually did once write a show for ABC, but it didn't get picked up. He also worked as a writer for a show with Eugene Levy for CBS. The actor tried his luck with writing movie scripts, but admits that it's a pretty difficult process. Still, he wants to make his own movie. He wanted to make it by the time he was 35, but unfortunately, he hasn't had any luck with it yet. Now, even though Though it's a small role, Martin is a part of the MCU. That's an achievement in itself. So far, he's been in The Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and Spider-Man No Way Home. He plays Roger Harrington, who was the student who gives Bruce Banner access to the computers at his university in exchange for pizza. He later graduated and went on to become a teacher, with one of his students being Peter Parker. Even if he isn't one of the major characters, he's had his moments. Actually, Martin seemed a little disappointed when one of the scenes involving him didn't make the final theatrical cut. He talked about how it was one of the most action-packed scenes he'd ever filmed. As per him, it went like this. Peter's class was running along the river, and they all stopped and looked up at the elementals fighting. Roger tells his students to run away and save themselves, and stays behind, shouting at the monster to take him, and that it's him that he wants. He also almost dies as debris starts landing all around him. The scene does suit Martin, as even though it's pretty heroic, it still sticks to being comedic. Well, these are some things you might not have known about Martin Starr.